Hi, this is Brian. Welcome back to the Optimal Living interview series. Today, I'm thrilled to be chatting with Daniel Harkavy, who has been a coach for the last 25 plus years, one of the world's leading life coaches and executive coaches, who created something called Building Champions and wrote a great book with Michael Hyatt called Living Forward. Um, and if you've ever kind of wanted to have a life coach in a book, a life coach in a box, if you will, and in this case, in this book, um, this is it. It's a really, really cool book to bring together the idea of uh, life planning. The subtitle of the book is A Proven Plan to Stop Drifting and Get the Life You Want. It's a, it's a short book, but it's it's challenging, it's insightful, it's awesome, and it's also a really practical guide to figuring out your life's plan. So we're going to talk about some of my favorite big ideas. Daniel, I really appreciate you taking the time and uh, super excited to chat. It's great to be with you, Brian. Thanks for having me. Well, let's start at the top. I always like to kind of get a sense of living forward. What was your thought process when you decided to name the book Living Forward? Uh, that's, a, that's an actual big question because I think we spent more time with both of our teams, the team here at Building Champions and then the team over at Hyatt's uh, crew with our agent and our publisher, we probably spent more time on the title than we did the content of the book. <laughs> I mean, we had probably 30 different names and uh, Michael would probably tell you he had one name that he liked better. I had one name that I liked better. And I think this is where we all just kind of said, okay, this is it. We all agree. So, you know, living forward, really what it's about, it's about um, understanding that each and every day we have the opportunity to make intentional decisions, proactive decisions that will enable us to be who we want to be and to add value in all areas of our life that are truly most important to us. But that requires some intentional thinking. It requires something that very few people will do, which is actually stop and reflect on and assess where you're at in life. So, you know, living forward with that subtitle, a proven plan to stop drifting and get the life you want, uh, it's exactly what this book is all about. And it's what, uh, it's what you can have should you not only read the book, but then follow through and do what's, uh, do what's recommended in it. Yep. Uh, I love it. Let's start with uh, what living forward is not. Let's start with drifting. Tell us what drifting is. So as an executive coach, a guy who's now going to be 52 years old, um, and I've been doing this for more than 20 years, what I'm very well aware of is that most of us kind of go through life reacting. And what we do is we react to the, the, the tyranny of the urgent. We react to what's most important. Most people put their energy in the, in the majority of their, their planning and their focus into just two areas of their life. I like to call these areas accounts. And, you know, you, what you see is people totally pouring into their professional account. They spend so many hours uh, preparing for, planning, investing, and working on their career. And I am not opposed to that at all. I think we should work and strive for excellence in everything we do. The second account that, that people will focus on is the, their financial account. And they'll do so because their financial account is what enables them to uh, acquire what they want, what they need, et cetera. So you have people putting a whole bunch of energy into these two areas of their life. And in so doing, they neglect the other areas of their life. They give their marriage, their health, their parenting, their friendships, their hobbies. They give all of those areas, oftentimes, their leftovers. And they just kind of drift through until all of a sudden they wake up and they realize they've been stuck in this drift, this cultural current, I call it, for quite some time. And they wind up at a destination they don't like. And that can look like, uh, you know, you're at the ER room with some chest pains, or it can look like uh, you're in a pretty gnarly, burly fight with your spouse and an attorney uh, trying to separate things that were at one time one. And, uh, you know, it can look like counseling uh, for challenges that blow your mind with uh, your kiddos. So, you know, drifting happens, and I've watched it happen to way too many people, really smart people with all sorts of degrees, people that are running amazing big companies. Uh, the drift is real, and we can all get sucked into it. This is good. Tell us the alternative. The alternative is to go through life with uh, some intentionality and to sit down and understand that your days are numbered. Uh, there's a, a fantastic uh, a fantastic uh, scripture in the Hebrew scriptures and it's Psalm 90 12 and it says so teach us to number our days so that we may gain a heart of wisdom you know I really think that's where we begin because if we understand the brevity of life and we understand that our days are numbered 
Well, then we start to operate from this, this foundation of wisdom because when you do that, you start to realize that there's only so many more Saturdays. There's only so many more weeks or so many more opportunities to be present. And um, when, when you start to live that way, you start to fill your day with more proactive and intentional decisions. When you're clear on what success looks like to you in all areas of your life, you can then begin to make very intentional decisions that enable you to add net worth into all accounts in your life. And that's the opposite of the drift. The opposite of the drift, instead of reacting, is being proactive. Instead of being unintentional, it's being intentional. And that's what the process in Living Forward is all about. That's great. Well, that's the perfect uh, movement into, tell us from a high level what a life plan is. And I'd like to talk about uh, some of my favorite attributes and hear you reflect on some more. But what, define a life plan for us. Yeah, so it's a short written document written, written by you for you. Uh, it helps you to identify all of the accounts in your life, the different relationships in your life, uh, areas of your life that are truly most important. It helps you to assess where you are today in comparison to where you'd like to be at some point in the future. And then it equips you to understand what habits or routines you can fill your days and your weeks with in order to move from today's current reality to where you'd like to be at some point in the future. So a life plan will um, encompass every aspect of your life that's truly most important. And it will act as a GPS for you, helping you to see where it is you want to wind up in each of these accounts at some you know, later point. You know, the one thing that some people might be thinking right now is that, uh, well, you know, you can't plan everything out. There's no guarantee. And whether you're going to ask that or not, I want to, I want to address that if that's cool. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah, because putting a life plan together doesn't mean you're going, to, you're going to arrive at every one of these destinations. But what it does mean is that you're going to stack the odds in your favor and you're going to be more in control of what you fill your day with so that no matter what comes your way, you'll be best prepared to respond in the best way instead of being caught off guard. So again, it's this whole intentional living. And uh, you know what I've seen is that if you'll take the time to put the life plan together, what you'll see regardless of what comes your way is that you can move through it, move forward, live forward with intentionality. And that's a, a really good way to live. Yeah, no doubt. And you use the, uh, the phrase GPS or the acronym, I suppose, for... Uh the life GPS that you talk about in the book, I think that's such a great metaphor for what the life plan does for us, kind of that compass and even more powerful, the GPS. Tell us yeah. about the three aspects of the GPS that you walk through in the book. So what we talk about is, you know, whenever you're going to go on a trip, uh, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to put that destination in. And very much like life planning. For me, what I've been doing in, let's just say my marriage account is, I've got this end zone. And for me, for years, I've said at the age 75, Sherry and I will be sitting together, we'll be one another's best friends. We'll be looking back on our lives and celebrating the gift that we've received of marriage. We will consider our parenting years some of the best years of our life. There's nobody we would rather spend time with. We are one, we are each other's best friends, we are intimate, we enjoy being with one another. So I look at that. That's the destination for the age 75. I'm 51 now, okay? And I've been looking at that, and that to me has magnetic pull power. Mm -hmm. I want to arrive there. I want to be that guy that's still having a blast with his bride. There's intimacy, there's fun, there's awesomeness. Mm -hmm. And if I can see something, a destination that has a lot of pull power, well, that then helps me to change my thinking so that I don't make decisions out of emotion mm -hmm. between here and there. So that's the first thing you do when you're, when you're setting a GPS is you set that destination. The second thing you do is you put your entry, entry point, your starting point, which is today. Where's my current reality? Hmm. You take inventory of where you're at in your marriage. You take inventory of, of what the relations, relationship's like. And then, just like with the GPS, you're now going to look for the, the, the steps to take to go hmm. from current reality to future state. Hmm. How do you go from your, your uh, place of origin to that destination? And that's the exact same thing that you do with the life plan is say, hey, here's current reality. This is where I want to go. You add another piece to it, a few more pieces, which we can talk about mm -hmm. later. But the main thing is that you then identify the steps that you're going to take. So it's dates every Monday afternoon. It's, uh, you know, overnight getaways every month. It's the last 30 minutes, eye to eye, ear to ear, connecting, reflecting, no work papers, no interruptions, mm -hmm. just pouring into her. It's, uh, 
you know, some specific things that you can repeat over and over again to add net worth into that account with intentionality. It's not something that you do if you feel like it. You do it because you know it's right, because mm -hmm. you've got a destination that you want to get to. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that's a, that's a quick Yeah, that's idea. amazing. So is, that's literally, was that a verbatim recap of your destination as you defined it in your life plan? Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. It's spot on. I've, I've, I've been reading that for many a years. We've been wow. married for 28 years next month. Wow. And yeah, I've been reading that for a good long time. And she truly is. She's, she's my best friend, man. There's right nobody on. better than her. Right on. And then I want to talk about pull power, which was the next idea I wanted to talk about. Before we get there, how many accounts do you have? That's a great question. Um, I don't know. I've got four kids. Uh, I'd have to look, but I've got to have probably... I probably have to have 13 or 14 accounts. Okay, what was the minimum too? Because that was one of the things I was thinking about as I was getting ready to... to... There's no minimum. You know what? We, we say that most life plans are going to have somewhere between, you know, maybe eight and, and 15 accounts. But here's the thing that can throw that off tilt. I have buddies that have eight kids, hmm. all right? <laughs> so if you follow my instruction, you're going to have a, an account for every kid. Yep. Because, you know, they're each individuals. Yeah. So, you know, you'll have one family account, but then you'll have an account for each kid. So I, I wouldn't get hung up on yeah. that. You know, here's some accounts. And, and in the life planning tool, the living forward tool that we give to you as, uh, as just a freebie with the book, we'll walk you through how to do it. And we'll give you the examples. You know, you're going to have – and you pick and choose. Uh, me, a married man, I've got a marriage account. I've got a health account. I have a faith account. I have a family account. I have a sanity account. I have accounts for each of my kids. I have – account for my finances, account for my career, account for um, my ministry charity. Uh, I have account for my siblings and um, extended family, account for my buddies. Uh, <laughs> and, and you know, that's, that's it. And, oh, and then I've got account for, uh, accounts for some of the different kids that have lived with us. So, Amazing. Yeah, and you got to have an account for your hobbies. I'm looking at a, a sweet, huge board in Daniel's office right now. So my hunch is you got an account for that as well to stay as a- uh, That's my sanity account. Are. That's the sanity, okay. Yeah, sanity. <laughs> so I've got to be in the water or uh, on the snow or on the creek riding some concrete, riding something every week. I've right got to be, you know, surfing, snowboarding or- Well, your energy is palpable. I love it. And uh, it's funny too, because you remind me of uh, my friend and another favorite writer, uh, Robin Sharma. The energy huh. right now of just that, that I was listening to him, and I literally just wanted to stand up and give him like a round of applause. Like, oh, so good. I was getting so fired up. This is good. Let's go back to pull power. We're talking about the GPS. You start with a destination. You start with something that just fires you up. I love the way you describe it as pull power. Tell us about that, please. Yeah, um, I think for all of us, uh, it's pretty easy to become apathetic. You know, apathy sets in in all areas of our life unless we have something that's pulling us forward. Um, I'm not a guy that likes to use fear as a motivation. So, you know, I don't want to write a vision statement that says, you know, don't blow it in your marriage. You're going to be divorced. Uh, your kids are going to hate you and you're going to have uh, half your net worth. That does nothing for me. But the opposite is what could be. Hmm. You know, what's worth sacrificing for? What's worth striving for? Our life goes by so quick. So, so in our life, when you look at every account in your life, and I gave you just now a quick overview of all the different ones, what is worth sacrificing for? What is worth doing the things regardless of how you feel in order to go from this current place to that future state? And, and if you don't have magnetic um, vision, a vision that's clear and compelling for all areas of your life. Now, business leaders, this is true in business as well, but I don't want to take that detour. Maybe we come back to that later. If you don't have a vision that's clear and compelling, then what will happen is you will not continue to evolve and change your habits. You'll continue to give leftovers to the accounts that are not giving you the most immediate gratification, such as parenting a two-year-old or a three-year-old. You've got a three-and-a-half-year-old right now. I'm sure he's the love of your life. You're digging him. Um, but there's going to come a time where you're going to be busy. Uh, you're going to have work things cooking. You're going to have pressures to do this and that. And he's going to want to talk, 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 talk. And I'm going to need you're, to wait for that phase. <laughs> okay, you're there, right? <laughs> yeah. And, and what can happen is you can oftentimes ignore that, neglect that, and not be present. Pull power is sitting there looking at a vision where you're sitting there looking at that guy at the age 18 and he's one of your best friends. Mm. There's, you know, you dig spending time with that guy. You've got a deep connection, a deep relationship. You know, you have not just become awesome father and son, but you've become friends. Yeah. And when you've got that magnetic vision for the future, that's got pull power. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and I, you know, I 
carve out a morning, an hour every morning to spend with him. We go on our adventure. I'm done at, you know, 5, 6 p.m., depending on the season. And that's a very big priority for me. But what I love about what you do in the book, and we're going to talk about uh, the law of diminishing intent and me scheduling my time to finish this. I went to the to the spa for those who haven't watched the uh, PNTV yet. And, I, you know, I carved it out. I'm like, okay, I'm all in on this right before my birthday. And that morning, my wife surprised me with, um, some amazing appreciations from our community and that wound up becoming you know that day which was a beautiful way to spend the morning um, but Daniel challenged me of okay you know you thanks for the video is awesome and when are you getting back in there in the spa <laughs> and what I'm excited about is to is to really crystallize that vision and, and as you so beautifully articulated your vision for your relationship with your wife you know to have that so close is really really exciting for me um, this is good. Yeah. And there's, you know, the, there is that vision of, you know, at 18, you know, in, in between here and there, him and I going on walks together, you know, and, and, and really enjoying that time together. But to, I'm getting excited imagining having that captured in that succinct, this is it. This is what's pulling me um, to align those values even more tautly, you know. Um, that's so, great. Yeah, well, that's you cool. know, so, so here's what happens without that. You know, I may be the only guy that's experienced this but I doubt it. Without a clear and compelling vision, so much of our interaction, so much of our interplay with people around us, our family members, our health, um, our finances, the areas of our life that are really important, we will make decisions based upon emotion, which means I'm going to treat you based upon how you last treated me or how I feel right now. And I may treat you in a way that doesn't align with who you are in my life based upon how somebody else treated me that I'll never see again. It was somebody in the grocery store and they got me so frustrated that I'm going to then treat you being my son, my wife, my health, my family or whatever in a way that doesn't line up. So by having that clear vision, by having that pull power, I can automatically shift and go, wait, that was that. This has nothing to do with it. Okay. I'm talking to you. I'm with you. This is where we're headed. This is my purpose in your life. This is you know, how I move forward with you. And what you're going to do is you're going to live a life that has a lot less regrets in it, a lot less regrets. And I think that's one of the saddest things working with guys and gals that I get to work with, guys that are maybe 10, 20, 30 years older than me, which I've had the privilege of working with. And uh, I think what's heartbreaking is they've, they've amassed immense fortune. They've done really, really well. But, you know, they've got some regret. They've got some... Um, real regret because there was neglect in their early years and they all say the same thing why didn't somebody introduce me to this when i was 20 Mm. you know yeah yeah yeah. that's awesome um and and not only the regret but then the the regret is the missed opportunity to truly optimize and actualize their potential within each of these different accounts and domains in their lives um well tell us your favorite idea in terms of the and obviously you walk through this in the book but tell us your favorite idea in terms of the the implementation of the plan for any given account to actually okay this is my destination we'll do the inventory of whether i'm showing up or not then how do you recommend we approach the actual uh, navigation if you will toward that destination yeah so i think you know this is going to be different for everybody depending upon what chapter of life you're in and what account you're at uh, I think this is really a, a unique thing. So earlier you asked me to give you the overview on what a life plan is, and it's a short written plan by you for you. Uh, so I don't think there's a one size fits all. Um, what I would say is look for a few things you can repeat over and over again. Uh, for years, when my kids were younger, I have kids now ranging in age from 26 down to 12. And uh, the first pack of them were 26, tw- they're 26, 24, 21. And when they were all younger, we would play low high at dinner every single night. And that was something that was in my life plan. Hey, what was the low of your day? What was the high of your day? Just to get really good, you know, meaningful conversation around the dinner table. And now we play it um, more spontaneously with our younger one and the older ones that are still around. Uh, But it's not with that same discipline because the family dynamics are different. Mm -hmm. My point being though, when you put something like that in, that was right for us for that chapter of time. And it was really good. Um, you know, for your health account, for me, I've had workouts at lunch. So I work out at lunch, uh, just about every day during the week, Monday Mm. through Friday. And that hasn't changed for more than 20 years. Mm. And, uh, it just does a whole bunch of good for me, Mm -hmm. but that's for me. I've got friends that like to do it at six in the morning and others that like to do it at four in the afternoon. 
So you got to figure out for you, how do you accumulate net worth? What are the the repeatable behaviors that you want to fill your calendar with, they become non-negotiable because they become your way of being the best version of you. Hmm. And, and that's super huge. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Um, let's talk about uh, in terms of best version of you. I jokingly called it optimize airlines. And you use the metaphor of, uh, you know, in the event of cabin pressure changing, right? And we experience inevitable stresses in life. Uh, take care of yourself. Can you talk to us about the importance of that? Yeah, it's, uh, so you, I just went for a run um, right before our time right now. And that was something that was just really hitting me is oftentimes we don't, we don't think it's right to take care of ourselves first. There's almost a, this sense of, um, I don't know, uh, a sense of pride or maybe false humility in giving to everybody else, you know, oh, I can't work out. Oh, I, I can't do that for myself. Uh, I can't put myself at the center of, of the, the target. Um, and I think what happens is we, we end up seeing it wrong. The way I look at it is I have to take care of me because the more energy I have, the better I care for myself, the better I can serve others. And that's the guy I want to be. I want to be a guy who's actually all day, every day, lifting the switches up on people's hearts and helping them to live a better life, helping them to see more, to believe more, to accomplish more um, every day, all day. But if I don't care for me, then all of a sudden I'm not the same me and I start to self-focus. I don't have the energy. You know, I'm not taking care of myself. I, I, so, so it's really big, um, you know, so that the optimized airlines metaphor with the, the, air, the uh, oxygen mask, man, they, they tell you every single time you fly, put the mm -hmm. mask on yourself before you put it on anybody else. And that's because they don't want you blacking out. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing in life. Take care of yourself so you don't black out so that you're there to be present and help other people. It's amazing that healthy level of self-focus to, to make sure we're plugged in paradoxically leads to a much less self-focused in the, ah, uh, you know, I'm just not pulling, I'm not pulling it together and feeling good. And then I'm obsessing about myself rather than actually giving myself. So love that. And I love the way that you articulate it. And again, not, you know, being, being, uh, silly about it, but just taking care of ourselves and, uh, and, and being there and being plugged in. Here's the, uh, the other idea I have in my thing that I want to flip over to you to see what we missed. Um, law of diminishing intent. This is your playful kick in the butt for me of, okay, now when are you going to, when are you schedule it? Uh, tell, talk to us about the law of diminishing intent. So um, this is a Jim Rohn quote, and I love Jim Rohn, uh, you know, leading an inspired life is a book that if you can get your hands on, Brian, if you don't have it, get your hands on it. Leading an inspired life, it's uh, for a guy like you, it will be um, a whole bunch of good eating for your brain. You'll dig it. Um, <laughs> So, so Jim Rohn uh, taught me the concept, uh, and it was through that book. Um, but basically what it says is that the longer that you put something out, I'm going to do this by the end of the year. The further out it is, the lesser the probability of you actually following through. And now as a guy who's run this executive and leadership coaching company for 20 years, I watch it all day. There's, we have Building Champions, we have 20-some coaches that work with – uh, 500 plus leaders every single month. And one of the disciplines we all have is helping people to drive to action sooner. You know, when are you going to start that? When are you going to get it done? Because the sooner you get after it, the higher the odds, the higher the probability of you actually adopting that, finishing that and getting it done and moving forward. So, uh, the law of diminishing tent, man, I, uh, for everybody. And I guess this is a good thing for, for me to say, you know, we're talking about my book living forward. And I am, I'm not excited about you buying my book, okay? What I'm excited about is you doing what's in my book. If you do what's in my book, your life can be changed. That's what fires me up. It doesn't fire me up to have bestseller on the cover other than if I do, it means that there's a higher probability of more people being impacted. But I don't want to hear people say, hey, man, I read your book. It was really great. And then me to say, hey, when did you get it done? Did you, what'd you do with it? And then say, oh, I haven't done it yet. I'm going to say, well, law of diminishing intent. I did not write the book so that it would be read. Mm -hmm. I wrote the book so that it would be lived. Hmm. That's awesome. And so when you're feeling fired up is the time to actually take action related to it, right? Because the further away you get from that moment of inspiration, the further away you get from ever doing anything Absolutely. 
Yeah, yeah normal awesome. life creeps in, man. Normal life creeps in and you, you forget about it. So here's the deal. So we're, we're recording this on a Tuesday. We're going to release it this weekend. And uh, I am going to book it for the next Tuesday, a week from today. Good. This is my good day. And uh, see, I'm on such a roll. And I know that I'm not alone, too, of, you know, I got my days. I just know what I'm doing. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday, Thursday. Where does the day come from, you know? In a, in a healthy way. If I'm, I'm feeling great. And I was excited to have this chat to get the to get exactly what we're doing right now. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'll be able to report into you my enthusiastic uh, appreciation for the, the next step, um, which is June 28th. Yes, it is. Mark down, down. I'm writing down a very important note. There will be a phone call made to the spa. Is it okay if I take a break for a 50-minute massage during this day, Daniel? Uh, if, if, that, uh, if that floats your boat, go for it. Yeah. I think it's great. I think it's great. <laughs> I'll be marinating in the goodness. Right uh, on. That's awesome. Um, what did we not talk about that, that we need to talk about to kind of – and obviously, we've simultaneously covered a lot and just scratched the surface. But is there anything that – kind of one of your favorite ideas from the book that we haven't touched on yet? Well, we haven't talked about the, the part that I probably get the most pushback on. And that is, I have everybody um, start the process with, uh, well, let's back up. You know, you're talking about June 28th. The book's going to drive you to investing one full day into building your life plan. Once you build your life plan, you take the day, it's then going to drive you to review it every single morning for 90 days hmm. so that you, you, your brain starts to focus on what matters most and then you can inhibit what doesn't, and the system review, reviewing it every day for 90 days will start to really impact the habits that you've identified in your life plan, and they'll become your way of life. And then you review it every single week for the rest of your life. And there's more in there. Mm -hmm. But when you're sitting there at the spa or wherever you folks may be, and I can tell you, you can do it at a park, you can do it at a, a quiet little coffee shop, you can do it um, at the beach, at the mountains, at a lake. I've had clients do it in all sorts of places over the last few decades. You want to be out of your norm. You're not going to piecemeal this thing. You know, the average American spends five, uh, five hours um, researching, uh, excuse me, I apologize, five days researching which car to buy. The average bride uh, invests 39 days into planning and preparing for her wedding, which will be over in five hours. But very few people will sit down and invest the hours required to, to map out your day. I mean, your life, excuse me. So... Um, I, I'm going to lead you to putting your life plan together at a special place and, and investing one entire day to it. Well, once you're there, the first thing that you're going to have to do is the one that we get some pushback on, and that is you have to write your eulogy. If you were to die today, what would be said about you and by whom? And the reason we start there is because, as I quoted earlier, Wisdom comes from numbering your days. So teach us to number our days so we gain a heart of wisdom. When we start to understand the brevity of life, it really engages the head with the heart, and you can then start doing the work required in order to put together a life plan that will really help you. Hmm. But if you're not willing to, to go through that exercise, you're going to come out with a life plan that's very cerebral, and it's not being birthed out of head and heart. And that's what's required in order to really lead you to transform and to make the changes that everybody watching or listening to us right now wants to make so that they can have an optimized life, more intentional, adding more value to everybody around them. No regrets, being completely present, and that's what they're after. But you start off by writing, off your eulogy, writing out your eulogy as if you were to die today. Then you write out legacy statements as to how you would want to be remembered at some point in the future. And that will really get you best positioned to then start cooking through the life plan. Right on. Well, I'm excited. Cool. This is good. I'm already, I'm already, I'm already in my next Tuesday mode of, of writing that and getting, getting ready to go. Um, right on, Brian. One of the things I like to do, and uh, let's, let's actually take a moment and, and point people to, so living forward the book, go get the book, Amazon, wherever you get books. Um, and then where can they connect with you? Uh, buildingchampions.com. So buildingchampions.com is my website. Uh, I've got a, 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 pay, a, a Facebook page, uh, an author page, Daniel Harkavy. I'm on Twitter. Um, you know, if they want to connect in a more meaningful way, my company does one 
um, public event a year, and that's coming up in September up here in Sun River, Oregon. It's going to be September 12th through the 15th, and uh, it's a time to reflect, plan, and connect, and it's primarily for leaders. So leaders and their teams, uh, we cap that at 225 people, and you can check that out on my website at buildingchampions.com. It's right there. It's the best ways to connect with me. And you were describing that as basically a, the first day is an intensive Im- immersion into a lot of this stuff, right? With the yeah, so the, the first day is all about living forward and life planning. Then we move into business vision, business planning and execution, priority management and decision making. And then I've got a really cool guest, a friend coming. He's a four-time Iditarod a racer, a dog musher, and he teaches some lessons on life and leadership that are phenomenal. He's 29 years old, and he's truly one of the most switched on, wise young men that I've ever hung out with, and he'll be coming and, and joining us as well. Right on. Um, good stuff. If, if you were going to share one piece of wisdom with someone passionate about optimizing their lives, I like to wrap up my chats with this. One piece of wisdom with someone passionate about optimizing their lives, what would that piece of wisdom be? And it might be something we touched on. It might be something different. What would it be? Yeah, so for me, I'm a man of faith. And um, for me, wisdom starts with me knowing uh, the scriptures, the Bible. I'm a Christ follower. Um, So for me, um, that's wisdom. I mean, wisdom for me is all found in the Bible. Um, You know, I don't ever uh, uh, push that. But when I get asked, I'm going to let people know where credit goes and where I get my wisdom from. Right on. Well, thank you. I appreciate you and your energy and your life force. We did a video chat. We're going to produce this audio. But uh, Daniel is lit up and living this stuff, and I appreciate the inspiration. Thank you. Absolutely. My pleasure. It was great, great being with you. Hi, this is Brian. A lot of people don't know all the stuff I do beyond these free videos I share on YouTube, so I thought I'd do a quick video to give you an overview of our membership program that you can get access to and get a ton of other stuff. Uh, So here's a quick look. 10 bucks a month, join the Optimal Living Membership Program. You get instant access to 250 philosopher's notes on some of the best Optimal Living books out there. Old school classics, positive psychology, modern stuff, mindfulness, peak performance, purpose, neuroscience, wealth, etc. And what you may not know is that in addition to the PNTV episodes... I create PDFs on all of these great books. So six-page PDFs. Let's take a look at one of them. Joseph Campbell. You want to figure out how to live your hero's journey. Well, this is a great place to start. I basically pull out my favorite big ideas, riff on them, connect them to other books and other ideas, and help you apply this wisdom to your life today. That's what the PDF looks like. Again, we have 250 of these on all these different great books. And then I record those PDFs as an MP3. So you can listen to that MP3 while you're on a walk or working out or doing some errands or whatever. Um, That is Philosopher's Notes. Uh, A lot going on there. And then in addition to Philosopher's Notes, you get access to Optimal Living classes, Optimal Living 101. Idea here is that all those great teachers come back to the same big ideas again and again and again. I distill those ideas into classes. Super practical, fun, inspiring classes ranging from Habits 101, Confidence 101, Getting Stuff Done 101, Meditation 101, instant access to all those classes. And then future classes include Relationships 101, Energy 101, Purpose 101, Business, Goals, etc. Those are our full-length classes. And then I create micro classes, two to three to five minute little bursts of wisdom on my favorite great ideas from these great books across the domains that you want to optimize in your life. So we have dozens of these so far. I create 50 new micro classes every month and 10 new philosopher's notes every month for 10 bucks a month. So we're blessed to have thousands of members who are uh, enjoying the program and sharing some incredibly kind words with us. And uh, super simple, 10 bucks a month, cancel any time. Would be honored to be a bigger part of your life. And I appreciate your support. And uh, here's to optimizing and actualizing.